There you go. Stay with him for a picture. Everybody say cheese. Let's go. Damn. Thank you. Good. One more. Bear with me, I'm not very tired. <laughs> <coughs> She has a presentation to show where we want to plant trees, and um, so if you do have questions, we'll hold those till the end and be happy to answer them, whether Kinsey can address those or we do have uh, some things in the works as well. So, this is like, do you want me to put this up here? That's all right. I don't want to block anybody's view. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you all for the introduction. Um, thank you for having me. I, again, my name is Kinsey Miller. I am the community forester through Tree Pittsburgh. We're a planting and tree advocacy uh, group from the city of Pittsburgh, but we also work throughout Allegheny County. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what our organization does um, and what we might be able to do here in Bridgeville. Uh, I also am an arborist, so I have knowledge on tree planting and care. If anybody has any questions about things like species selection, I'm going to be talking a little bit about that. Uh, in my presentation. Tree okay. so. Pittsburgh, just a little background. We were established in 20, 2006 uh, as an instruction from the Pittsburgh Shade Tree Commission um, to help implement the city's street tree management plan. So we are a nonprofit organization and we receive funding from um, mostly from grants and through private donors as well. Our mission is to enhance the city's vitality by planting and uh, protecting and restoring the city's uh, tree canopy through maintenance education um, and advocacy. So one of the questions that we get a lot is, what is ur the urban forest, what's urban forestry, what's the difference between them? Um, they are a little bit finicky definitions, because you might not think of cities or suburban spaces as having a forest. It doesn't look like what a state forest might look like, or a forest that you'd see in one of your city parks. But for our, for our uses, an urban forest is basically the community of trees that are in an urban or suburban area. So that includes a tree in your backyard or in front of your house, the trees next to the school playground or in whatever city parks you may have or along the street. 
So it's that community of trees, and urban forestry is the management of that community of trees. So if we know that trees are going to come down through a development project, or if there are storms that are coming through, that sort of thing, or if there's a disease that's affecting a lot of the trees in the community, urban forestry helps plan for the restoration of those trees and the protection of those trees. The first thing, one of the first things that we did um, at Tree Pittsburgh after we were established in 2006 was to begin work on an urban forest master plan. Our urban forest master plan is for the city of Pittsburgh, but we got a lot of really interesting data throughout uh, the planning process that applies to all of Allegheny County. The main data that we got was from our urban canopy <coughs> assessments. So we used um, a tool called LIDAR. It's different than radar, but it, it measures through satellite the height of different buildings and surfaces um, on, on the ground. So we are able to tell within a couple of feet this, the height of different things. And using that data, we were able to find where the tree canopy was. And we did this process twice, in 2010 and in 2015. So then we were able to get a picture of any tree canopy gain or tree canopy loss that happened over those five years. This data can help us make decisions on what we want to do. If there is canopy gain in a certain area, what happened? Why, did, why was that gain? Did people plant trees? Is it a vacant lot that was left and has grown up? Why, were tree, why was tree canopy lost? Was it through a development project? Was it through residential tree removals? Um, and how can we use that information to plan for the future of our forests? This is sort of an image of what our maps look like. The green is tree canopy that did not change from 2010 to 2015. So this was there in 2010 and is still there in 2015. The green, or the, sorry, the blue is tree canopy that was gained. So it wasn't there in 2010, but it has grown up high enough for us to be able to see with, our, with the LiDAR technology by 2015. And then the red is tree canopy loss. So that is where trees were and no longer are. <coughs> this is a map showing all of Allegheny County um, by percentage of tree canopy loss. That is Bridgeville. So you're in the middle. Every municipality throughout Allegheny County experienced net tree canopy loss. Some experienced less tree canopy loss than others, but even with tree plantings that we've done through Tree Pittsburgh and other community groups planting trees, there was so much tree removal that every single municipality lost tree canopy. So our goal when we saw this information was, oh my goodness, we have to be doing outreach and working with people, working with neighborhoods and communities and trying to get this tree canopy back because trees have a lot of benefits for us through public health and many other reasons. So this is Bridgeville. Um, this is the tree canopy in 2015. We don't have data from 2020 yet, um, but it shows the tree canopy that was there in 2010 and any tree canopy that grew since 2010. And this is a map of tree canopy loss. So it looks pretty sparse. There are very scattered dots that tells us that the tree removals that were happening were likely happening um, on residential property. Maybe someone's tree died in their backyard, and so they had to get it removed, which is why it looks so scattered. And it doesn't look like there's a lot of loss, but when you add all of this together, it's equal to almost 21 acres of loss. And that's, that's almost 16 football fields worth. So if you took all of the trees that were removed and lined them up in the same area, it would be the same as almost 16 football fields. So it doesn't, it doesn't look like a whole lot when you look at a map like this, but once you put it all together, it really adds up over the, over the course of time. So what happened to it? Like I said, probably a lot of what happened was residential tree removal from old dying trees and that sort of thing. But we also know that there were some <coughs> natural causes, some pests and disease that were coming through in this time. Um, from 2010 to 2015, we were hit with emerald ash borer, so all of the ash trees in Allegheny County are pretty much gone. There's maybe a couple stragglers, but the majority of them have died. There are other diseases like oak wilt, um, verticillium wilt, that have come through and affected a lot of different types of trees. So we're seeing a net decline, um, especially in older trees. And then there's things like storms. There was that microburst that happened a couple months ago. Um, landslides, other sorts of natural events that are taking down tree canopy. But aside from natural causes, there's also human causes. So taking down a tree that if maybe a new property owner moved in and there's a tree that's growing up in their yard and they don't like it, so they take it down. Or there could be development happening, um, infrastructure changes. <clears throat> One thing that I noticed looking at this, I'm not sure what the project was, but there's this chunk of loss right here, and that's right next to Shutters Creek along 79, and it looked 
from the Google Maps images I was looking at, like there was maybe some development happening. So just trying to figure out why tree canopy loss is happening, where it's happening, um, and what we might be able to do to mitigate that in the future. Biggest question, why does it matter? So trees provide a lot of benefits to us as, as people. Um, one of the main ones that we talk about in urban areas is they can decrease surface temperatures. So when you have a tree canopy, if you've walked along a tree-lined street, it's pretty easy to tell that it's gonna it's cooler than a tree that has than a street that has no trees along it. And you know, the sun will bake the concrete, it'll bake the pavement, and that heat will really, really hold in throughout the day um, and into the nighttime. So the streets stay warmer. But if you have trees lining a street, it cools down the pavement. If you've ever been waiting in line for a roller coaster or something, and they have those little misters that spray on you and cool you down, trees do that process. They take water in and release it back into the air, thereby cooling um, the surrounding temperatures. So if you have trees in front of properties that are casting shade on your property and cooling through evapotranspiration, you'll have to pay less in cooling costs. You might not have to turn your AC on as soon or turn it on quite as often. And if you plant trees strategically against the north wind, they can also help cut down heating costs. Trees also mitigate stormwater runoff. So if you have a lot of, I don't know if you struggle with flooding here, <laughs> here in your house. Um, I do, no, I do. Um, so that's a huge problem here in Allegheny County. And trees can help mitigate that by soaking up the water through their root systems. Any exposed area, they're going to hold some of that water in, filter out particulate matter and minerals that are coming off of the street. But also they'll hold some of the rainwater on their leaves. And there's actually a significant amount of water that can be held in a tree's canopy that will fall slowly later or evaporate into the air, but it's not immediately running into um, the stormwater system or the sewer system. They also, like they do with water, they improve air quality by filtering out particulate matter. So they can help us breathe a little bit easier and then they help us calm down. If you're walking down through, through a park with a lot of trees, you will probably feel calmer than if you're on a busy street where there's maybe a lot of, it's really hot and there's a lot of cars honking as they go past you. So they do provide mental health benefits in that way. One of the big things, because this is being planted along, or there, it is potentially being planted along Washington Avenue, is a busy street and it's hot and there's a lot of cars and they go pretty fast. So if you plant a lot of trees along in a corridor and they grow up and they arch over the street, it creates a tunnel effect. And we all know that people like to go really slow through the Fort Pitt Tunnel because that's just what happens naturally. You want to go slower through a tunnel area. And so having a corridor, a tree-lined corridor, can help calm drivers, help them drive slower. Maybe because there's that mental health effect, they might not be so angry and honking at everybody. And it makes it a little bit safer for pedestrians. So moving on. You know about the canopy loss here, you know about why trees are good. So what, what would it look like if we were to grow a new canopy here in Bridgeville? This is an image from uh, Google Street View showing the trees that were along Washington <coughs> Ave before. Um, they're honey locust trees, and as you can see, this tree pit is far too small. So honey locusts, while they can be a good choice of tree for an urban area, they're salt tolerant, pretty hardy, they have really aggressive root systems. So when they're planted in a sidewalk in a space that's far too small, they're going to be looking for water and nutrients underneath the sidewalk. They're going to push out and lift, lift the sidewalk and cause you know, tripping hazard, make it difficult for maintenance. So there's a lot of problems both in species selection and the, the planting culture is what we call it, the way, the way that this was planted, the physical controls that we have um, and the decisions that we can make when planting trees. So moving forward, um, we would not plant honey locusts, and we would not plant in tree pits that small. This is a picture of Washington Ave Night. Right now, we have those beautiful um, pits with the lovely rose bushes. There's a lot of space. So if you were to plant a tree in this area, you probably wouldn't have the same issues. The roots wouldn't be quite as constricted. They have a lot more space to grow, a lot more soil to pull nutrients from. And also, when we're thinking about replanting areas, one of the things we are very we stress heavily at Tree Pittsburgh is right tree, right place. Making sure the species selection is done well, that we're picking a tree that is good for an urban environment. 
it will grow narrow, it will have um, a less aggressive root system, and also trying to work on those physical controls, making sure that it has enough space to grow and it's not going to be constricted and causing problems years and years down the line. So I just wanted to go through a couple of the species that we were, we were considering for this space. None of this is set in stone. Um, these are just from the list of trees that we have from our nursery, where we source trees um, generally. And so there were four species that we thought would go well. Starting off with the smallest is the flowering cherry. It's called um, snow goose. So this would go in areas near um, in smaller spaces if there's an awning coming down or right in front of, near a street light, you know, we don't want a giant tree growing up into the street light that's going to cause problems for whoever has to come pr through and prune and maintain those branches to create those sight lines. So something small that will grow low and grow compact, but still has a beautiful sort of aspect in the spring you get those flowers. <coughs> the second, this is a medium-sized tree, the European hornbeam. Again, it grows um, upright. This is what the tree looks like as a young tree planted along the street. This is it a little bit further down the line. You can see it continues to grow in that sort of conical shape. All of the trees that we will be that we would be bringing would have high branching like this. So you wouldn't have anything that has low branching that could cause issues with pedestrians or with cars or tractor trailers that are passing by. This is what it might look like um, a few years later down the line. This tree is probably this one's probably 15, 20 years old, and it still has that maintain, still has maintained that this digit upright structure. The two larger trees that we were considering were the Regal Prince Oak. This is a cross be between um, an English oak, so it has again a more upright look. These are new trees, how they might look a little bit down the line. You can see how tall they are. Again, the branching would be higher than this. Um, they would be pruned up probably. <coughs> And then later, you can see they have really lovely yellow fall color to add some uh, autumn interest. And this is the way that they look, um, you know, 20, 30 years later. Again, picture that with like a trunk down here. It wouldn't be quite, we wouldn't have it like a landscape tree like that. And then the last one is ginkgo. Phenomenal urban tree. We love planting these. They're super salt tolerant. They're really hardy. They have an awesome structure. A young tree planting right here along the street, you can see they look quite nice. And then as they grow old, they again have this beautiful yellow fall color. And that's a much older specimen. It still has maintained that sort of fastidious uh, contained look. One of the things that people are always really nervous about, understandably, is ginkgo fruit. Um, ginkgo gets a bad rap because the female uh, trees have fruity bodies that really don't smell great once they start to rot if they fall on the ground. But when we are looking at trees, it's me and my coworker Matt who go up and select these trees individually. We know what to look for. We are selecting trees that are male grafts. So it has a hardy rootstock, and then they put a graft union in with um, a male tree specimen. So it will not fruit. We always double check to make sure the graft union is there, so you're not getting any female suckers that might. 20 years down the line, start dropping fruit. We're very, very careful in terms of species selection for ginkgo because it is an issue. We don't want people to have to deal with smelly fruit on their sidewalks down the line. So just to run over some of the things that we at Tree Pittsburgh side are thinking about when we're doing tree planning or tree planting, tree species selection is probably one of the most important. So something salt tolerant, especially for Washington Ave, because it's along the road and a well-trafficked pedestrian area. There's going to be a lot of salt on the roads, understandably. Less aggressive root systems, so you don't get sidewalk lifting and tripping hazards. An upright growth form, so the tree doesn't grow into sight lines for stop signs or traffic lights or into someone's awning, that sort of thing. And then disease resistance, so we want to make sure we're picking trees. Not, we're not going to plant an, an elm, an American elm, that was wiped out in the 70s from Dutch elm disease, which is still around. So we want to make sure that these trees are going to last and they're not going to die tomorrow from a disease we know is here. And then right tree, right place. That's that concept of making sure you're not going to plant a giant oak tree right in front of the street light or right in front of the stop sign um, because that just doesn't make any sense. It's going to have to come down eventually. You don't want to plant a giant tree right under wires. You want to plant a small tree that's not going to interfere with those wires. And then the cultural practices. So that's making sure the street tree pits are long, like they are already with those rose bushes. 
that's ensuring proper pruning in the first couple of years as these trees get established so that the trees themselves will grow with a wood structure and they're not going to fall apart in a storm in five, ten years. And that's something that we at Tree Pittsburgh can help with. We offer trainings for citizens who are interested in helping. We do a tree tenders training so people can learn more about tree planting in their community, basic pruning, and we also do trainings for public works departments on um, tree planting and um, pruning specifically because that's very important um, to keep these trees well maintained, keep them watered, keep them mulched. And I know that Courtney has found some volunteers who would be willing to help with that. Um, in the planting process, Tree Pittsburgh will provide up to $5,000 for trees. And I believe we found potential for 28 sites um, in the current tree pits that are along Washington Avenue. Now, before you, before we would ever plant, you know, we'd do PA1 calls, see if there's utilities. And if there are utilities, some of those trees might not be able to be planted. Um, again, definitely want to be thinking about the long term. Don't want to plant something that's going to have to come out in five years because someone needs to replace their water main or something like that. Um, yeah, and then we also provide things for volunteers on planting day. So we have gloves, we have shovels, we can bring a ton of mulch, um, we bring stakes, that sort of thing. So there's a great opportunity for partnership. We have a lot of resources we can provide, um, a lot of expertise that we would love to offer. And that's that's pretty much what I have. So anybody have questions? You had mentioned the less aggressive root systems. Mm -hmm. Well, how are you going to avoid them going into the sidewalk so they go down more or the, that they protect the trees? Or how, how is that determined? Yeah, so there are, it's, there are different types of trees. Um, they are The species we're choosing are mainly smaller trees, and smaller trees don't need quite the same soil volume as a larger tree like a honey locust might need. And then there's just different species grow in different ways. Honey locust particularly has uh, a root system that wants to push out and kind of colonize that space. Other trees rely more on fibrous roots. They're not going to have quite as many hardy structural roots that will push in those areas. They'll move, if there's, there's a wall here, the root is gonna hit it and move in a different direction. That's generally how trees wanna grow. So um, they're not gonna, pick away at, at concrete, um, they'll try to grow within the space that they have. So the trees that we are we would choose would be ones that would be more well suited. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Yes. Yeah, but are you familiar with Grant Street downtown? Oh, the trees? Mm -hmm. I'm not actually, no. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Our company, we, they remodeled Grant Street, we mm -hmm. streets in, planted trees. Big planters in the middle of the road, mm. and I forget what kind of trees they were, but we put in uh, tree boxes, mm -hmm. which are basically like six feet deep and about six feet square. Mm -hmm. Put little grates <clears> over <throat> the top of them, plus equid irrigation systems and put the trees down. And those things are flourishing after 30 years. It's beautiful. And it really doesn't make trees. I'm just curious, do these trees survive like on rain, basically? Or the public works people or volunteers <coughs> are coming to water them, or what's the story of that? Yeah, that's a great question. So, specifically in the first couple of years, probably the first one, two to three years, the trees should be watered, especially during the summer or during droughty periods. So, if there's a big downpour, you probably don't need to worry about the trees, but in the first three years, uh, the young trees are not <coughs> going to be establishing their root systems because you know, they were picked up from the nursery, they lost 80% of their roots, and then they're plopped down in a new place with new soil. So watering them is really important in, in that period of time. So whether it's the public works department or volunteers who come out and help water or um, a commitment <coughs> from property owners who might have that kind of investment um, and would be interested in putting in that time, the tree should be watered for at least the first three years. And then um, we at Tree Pittsburgh try to send out reminders to people if it's particularly droughty. So that, that time where there was like three to four weeks of no rain last month, um, we were sending out reminders but after a certain amount of time, the trees will be well enough established they can survive on rainwater. Yes. Just repeat the list of trees, the four that you mentioned. Yes. So it is a prunus, a cherry tree called snow goose. Um, I'm not sure what the. 
think it's, yeah, I just have Prunus snow goose. Um, so that's a specific variety. I, if you want to write it down. It's the oak. The oak, okay. The European hornbeam, uh, France Fontaine is the specific cultivar. While we're going through that, um, this, when we talked to Kinsey and Matt at Tree Pittsburgh, this is something that um, we were just doing feasibility, finding out to bring information to you to see if this is something that would be feasible. Um, we do have a, a huge number of people that are interested in helping with this project, so planting day, we would have enough bodies to, to do this. Um, and you were suggesting that the best time to plant would be either in spring of 2020 or wait and then till the fall? Yes, yeah, so um, tree planting season is generally um, March, April, early May, and then we haven't quite started tree planting yet, so usually October through the end of November in the fall. In the summer, it's a difficult time to plant. In the winter, obviously, the ground is frozen and the trees are dormant, so that wouldn't go so well. So fall is good. Um, the oak is the regal prince. And then the ginkgo is ginkgo biloba. I'm not, we have, there's two varieties, Magyar and, <laughs> oh, I'm blanking on the other one. There's two specific um, all-male varieties that we get from our nursery. So um, I can definitely send out some notes with this information on it if you're interested. And maybe just to point out, the, the $5,000 that uh, Tree Pittsburgh has uh, from grant money <coughs> that they have received, that would basically cover what we're talking so just yeah. could you break that down as far as like cost per tree kind of sure so you said there's 28 trees potentially there are 23 in, potential sites 23, sorry. um it really did or, sorry 28 28 yeah be great <laughs> 28 potential sites uh but with pa one call you never really know what's underneath so the likelihood of all those getting planted is it might be it might end up being more like 20 to 23 trees, and so each tree um, generally comes out to be about $200. Uh, I think we get them for 150 to 175, up to 200 from the nursery, and then on top of that, we'll be bringing mulch. I'm not sure how much that would add to the cost, but each tree is generally between 200 to $250. So you're staying out of the sidewalk. You don't have to bust out any sidewalks. No, right? no, they'd be in the pits that are already there. Yeah. If there are utilities underneath, do you ever use contraptions like Joe's talking about that would box and segregate them from, is that a plausible thing? That's a good idea. Uh, I don't know if we've done that in the past, and I'm not sure what the, cost, the extra cost of that would be. Um, definitely something to think about in the future, potentially, but at this point, we would just be planting in areas that don't have utility conflicts. <clears throat> or we'll discover that we have already. Right. Yes. <laughs> so this, um, the, the planting sites that you were talking about, those are from Bower Hill to, um, what Pickman. street is it, Pickman, is that correct? I think so. That's, okay. So um, what they, what we had talked about was trying to have trees line the entire, um, from bridge to bridge, but what and you can speak to this um, about planting at different times so you have different maturity levels of trees um, yeah. and different species of trees within each planting. So we were thinking doing you know, the first phase between um, Bower Hill and Hickman and then when the construction project is done at the end um, we can you know, address those concerns down at that end if that would even be feasible but that would give a couple more years um, you know, for another project potentially. So yeah, um, I apologize. I have, I had walked the street with um, my coworker Matt, and we had put down points where there are potential planting sites, and we had written in potential species, thinking also about the look. So making sure that it's mirrored, it looks nice, it's not like 
random trees in random places, but unfortunately I don't have that on this computer. It's uh, on a different computer. But I can send that to you all if you would like to get it. What are the next steps in the official process? Like, what is to happen next? Uh, Whoever can <laughs> I guess we would have to. We would have to. We have to council will support. Yeah, support. Yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you are you submitting some sort of final report to them of some kind? Do you need to see so much kind of evidence or a budget or projected costs or time for it? I mean, I guess you could submit a budget. Yeah. I mean, apparently, you know, we're looking at this as a project that's been funded by either Tree Pittsburgh or their their group. Um, but if it's a matter of us deciding. Number one, do we do want trees? Want do yeah. And can we can we do this? You know. Yeah, that was going to be the next question. Is there some like right of way, or who owns the tree? Is a cranky shop owner going to come on down? Like I don't know what the long term story. Yeah. What the what? Like I said, you're getting this information just like we did. Cool. So we're, we're, we're going to have to just. You're ready with all your tree answers. <laughs> one thing what we're going to have to do is do a one call because I know they put electrical conduit. We have one. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's going to do all over. There is conduit in there, so you got to... Most that. each tree is already <coughs> not that covered. Okay. Who owns the rose bushes that are currently in the planting beds? We do. Now? We do. Borough. The borough. Okay. And they are beautiful. They are. Anything else? Uh, I, I think we should put a formal proposal together and Thank you. maybe Thank next you. month be able to have a more of a discussion and can put it to a vote at that point. And a budget is probably very important just to yeah. settle everything. Well, I think as well as a maintenance schedule. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there is responsibility as far as volunteers? Like absolutely. Volunteer? I can give you a list of the volunteers that we um, currently have that are interested in helping and Kenzie and um, Bert and I can work together to find out how often um, you know the volunteer group will be there to Prune. I know I'm planning on attending one of the classes for Tree Pittsburgh. Um, when are the two dates? The, up, the upcoming Tree Tenders class is December 7th at the Tree Pittsburgh campus in Upper Lawrenceville. It's an eight hour class where you cover any, everything from tree biology to pruning, planting, um, to volunteer organizing. Uh, I'm not sure when the next one is that. Is that, is that the one in March? Did that happen already? Yeah, I don't think so. Um, but I can also talk to you about those things. Great. Thank you all. And I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. For Thank you very much. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Um, off Friday. Uh, two, two things. Uh, at the last meeting, coincidentally, I mentioned that the, the tree planting program went after uh, Justine Simroli's presentation about the field plant trees. I mentioned you know, an excellent opportunity to plant trees from the post office on both sides of the street down to the allegedly new seven lane bridge and but also put in an extension of seven or eight of those uh, traditional street lights. Yeah. <clears throat> what you just heard from this young lady fits right into that. <clears throat> I just wanted to mention to you and I, I can contact her later, but uh, between the post office and the Charters Cricket and Bridges to be, as I think someone mentioned here tonight, there are conduit underneath the sidewalks. But the plan that I laid out indicates specific spaces that were between the sidewalk and the buildings where there's really a great deal of room where you can actually plant larger trees. But uh, I wanted to mention uh, the major importance of my, in my opinion, of uh, having an impressive business district and community is when you plant these elegant structures, have uplights on them so that it, it enhances the, every feature of the tree. You guys can decide whether you like that idea or not. <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to mention to you is <clears throat> in terms of uh, the traffic congestion problem in Bridgeville and the parking deficiency in Bridgeville, have you guys made any efforts that our engineer, have you guys attempted to contact PennDOT or uh, the parking authority about uh, <coughs> solving those two problems? What, PennDOT uh, parking? No, no PennDOT, <coughs> no, the parking authority 
I'd like to inquire into the last section of open land and essential businesses. No, we have not contacted. Yeah, I, I urge you again to do that. That's really critical. I mean, and, and Bob, you know, we've talked about that. I mean, you know, this, I mean, it's the same story. You know, we don't own that property. There's people that actually own that property. It's not like it's, you know, it's up for for sale. Or, um, and, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I do not disagree with you that it's a very viable piece of property that could be used for something such as parking. But it is not owned by us. So what? Okay. It, it, All right. I'm here. No, excuse me. I, I, how how can you say that it's such a critical piece of land? Just to talk about the parking lot, the 50 car parking lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You're concerned. Well, the obstruction you describe is that some that it's owned by other people. It's got to be owned by the people of Bridgeville, and it's up to you guys to acquire the property. So you want us to just say, "Hey, you got to sell it to us." That's exactly right. And I, I disagree. Oh, really? Well, that's poor judgment. On well, your I, I disagree. And let, and let me give you an example. The, the largest parking lot in Bridgeville, across from across from the post office and. Uh, Berg's restaurant, that quadrant. There were two doctor's offices and five individual homes there that the county went in because the borough hesitated doing it and purchased each of those properties at much more than when they were when, when they were worth. And the people, two years later, thanked the county and the borough for doing that. You've got to do that again. Okay. I mean, why would you? Why would you? I'll tell you again. The five, the, considering the fact that the average income of the original family is $55,000 a year, Jeff, even though you might be making $150,000 a year. Hey, Bob, I haven't money. attacked you. You don't attack me. Um, you I'm make not. a comment with your general statements right. of all of that income numbers that nobody is, knows where you get them from. I would the love, love, them love. Up. Love for you to show me your calculations I'll on be, where those numbers come I'll from. I'll be glad to, Joe. I'm please, just, I'm just please. Responding. I've asked you a couple times already. No, no, you didn't. You've never asked me once, Joe. I'm just responding to your poor judgment. Yeah. Uh, thinking that. Well, about, it's my opinion. Can I respond to your no, opinion? No, no. It's my opinion that I think it's ridiculous that you think you want to take people's property when that's their investment. It's their investment. They can decide what they want to do. It. They have a decision. They're obviously your rumors that you've heard. They're they're already planning on doing stuff with it. Correct. Uh, excuse me. This is an example there we go. of the attitude by Bridgeville officials that's caused the problem of the town for 50 years. Instead of being concerned about the tax burden on the public and the and the public and the services and facilities that the people, families, and kids and youth would have compared to the communities around us. You're more concerned about taking two pieces of, not you aren't taking, you're buying two pieces of property from uh, the Dreon family, whoever owns the Arco building, for more than it's worth to help the public. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Correct me if I'm wrong, they don't want to sell it. Correct. It doesn't matter if they don't want to sell it. Okay. Anyway, excuse me for losing my temper, but this attitude is just absurd. And this has caused a problem with in Brazil for, again, the traffic congestion problem, you get the same thing. Seven different engineers have told all of you and your predecessors for 20 years to extend Shady Avenue. They never told us. No. no. No, you said they've told us. They might have told our predecessors well, that's 30 true. years ago. But you have, you have all the studies. Seven They're different 30 studies. 30 years old. So the problem's 30 years <laughs> worse. The solution's the same. Bob, well, there's times when they've done <clears throat> Project, traffic project, they look back and they say that was wrong. Like, like what? Look at downtown Pittsburgh when they put the cross the uh, cross town um, parkway behind that's basically cut uh, Pittsburgh in half from the Hill District to the downtown. They they admit that, that was a bad decision. Mike. You have a you good have example of Gardena, perhaps it was bad. So, it does, so I'm not gonna, excuse you, me. If you, can bring, if you can bring an engineer here to a meeting, they'll that they'll say this is a good idea. All you bring, all you tell us is, this is the people have been telling us for years to do this. That's right. No, maybe 40 years ago, you, you show us plans that are 40 years old, um, but you don't have anything that, uh, an engineer that says, today is the best thing to do that. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Matter of fact, but I keep one thing in mind. Extending Washington Avenue, Shady Avenue, which is parallel with Washington Avenue, 
220 yards. Mm -hmm. That means for two, only two city blocks, there's going to be two one-way, three-lane wide roads going through Bridgeville. And by the way, since Bridgeville has a four-lane road coming in from the north and a four-lane road coming in from the south and a thousand linear feet of two-lane road, you I mean you can't figure out how that would be helpful. And where are you going to put the four-lane road underneath the trestle? I, d I gave you drawings. Where, where are you going to put a four-lane road underneath the trestle? You, you extend the trestle? I gave you drawings about that. Don't you, don't you read the... Do we own the trestle? No. No, no the, the, the railroad trestle. Sure. No, the railroad trestle. How, how are you going to put four lanes in between the underneath the trestle? You don't put four. You extend the trestle 25 feet. You put two lanes. Do we own the trestle? No, we own the trestle. No, no, no the railroad. Well, once again, I'll tell you what. The railroad doesn't even want to paint the trestle. It, it, you know what, guys? The, the traffic flow on Washington Pike is the responsibility of PennDOT, not yours. You guys have been standing in their way for 50 years. It's PennDOT's job to solve the traffic. You have, you have seven, six of the major regional roads come into Bridgeville. You have a two-lane wide road. That's why there's a mile of traffic going on in three different directions in the community and why your business has to collapse. It's good if you get your heads together and do something about it. Don't tell me about having to buy someone's property. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Together. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. All right, on to the regular meeting. Nobody else is signing Okay, uh, motion of the borough council to approve the minutes of September 9, 2019, regular May meeting as submitted. Bruce and Virginia, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion of the borough council to approve the October 2019 bill list. I'll move. Uh, Joe Gucci. Second. And Joe Klaus. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion the borough council to approve the October 18, 25, and November 1 and 8, 2019 payrolls. Uh, Bruce? That's a high second. Sorry. That's all right. Nina. And Nina. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Motion. Regarding resolution number 2019-13 of the Borough Council, formally requesting CDBG funds from the Allegheny County Department of Economic Development in the amount of $38,000 for ADA ramps and sidewalks and designating an official to perform the required duties between the ACED and Bridgeville Borough. Mike, can I ask a question? Yes. So in our last month's packet, there were photos of the ADA ramps that they were going to do, but there are several sidewalks that were broken right. and uneven leading up to those ramps. Is that included? I don't know. Does don't this know. include that? I'm it's just, just for the ramps themselves. Okay. Just the ramps. So we don't have to go So I don't know whose responsibility that is, but there's, especially down by Chess and um, yeah. Station, down closer to the churches, there were some pretty bad sidewalk slides. Okay. I know we did all the, we did a whole bunch of uh, corner sidewalks all around Bridgeville a while back. Um, we we'll probably look into that. But this would just be for the ramps you're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So moved. Uh, Bill Henderson? Second. Uh, let me get that to me. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to the Borough Council. Regarding a subdivision plan application submitted by Thomas Dance Studio on behalf of uh, Robert David Holding Companies, LLC, for the property located at 111 Washington Avenue, contingent upon complete completion of all items noted in an LSSE's review letter dated September 27, 2019, Planning Commission reviewed and recommended. <coughs> Continue approval at their September 30th, 2019 meeting. That's so. And Bruce, um, were you here for that by any chance? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Did you have anything to comment? I, I saw you. I saw a drawing. Yeah. So. If there's any questions, I'm prepared to answer any questions. But uh, the questions. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? There you go. 
Uh, motion of the Borough Council regarding a site plan application submitted by Thomas Dance Studio on behalf of Robert David Holding Company, LLC, for the property located at 111 Washington Avenue, contingent upon completion of all items noted in the LSSE's review letter dated September 27, 2019, Planning Commission review and recommended contingent approval at their September 30, 2019 meeting. Mike, I have one question. Yes, sir. Um, and you might not be able to answer this, but with the planning commission, there was a couple of punch list items or things. Those were all satisfied. So I'm Matt Davis of Sonoma. Yeah. <coughs> yes, they've all been addressed. They okay. Not and that, I, I came to the planning commission meeting, and mm -hmm. they, there was a discussion back and forth that there was a couple minor issues. A couple minor issues, and they've all been resubmitted. Okay. Uh, Thank you. There. On the subdivision plan and the land development. Correct, both of them. And I saw the clean letter. I'm, I beg your pardon. I saw the clean letter on the on the subdivision plan. Mm -hmm. I think there was a similar one as well on the correct plan development. It was separated into a motion. I believe it's the second motion. Right. right. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have a motion? I have a motion. Uh, Bruce. Is there a second? I'll second. And Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Right. All those opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Uh, motion to accept the bids for backwater valve contract phase two, uh, contract number 10-S1, and award the bid to the lowest responsible bidder, uh, Osiris Enterprises, in the amount of $168,000 and seven, $168,700. Uh, contingent upon review of all documents and recommendation by the borough engineer. Uh, bids were advertised and publicly opened on October 10, 2019 at 11 a.m. in the council chambers with the following bid results. Uh, Cyrus Enterprises, 168,700, 10% bid bond, and Rotor Rooter Services, $180,560 at 10%. Make a motion. Just a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Contract number 19S1. Question I have, how many? How many there are 25. 25. 25. Yeah. Uh, motion? Uh, Bruce, who, anybody second? Okay, And Nino, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to the council regarding the following real estate tax refunds due to change in assessments as requested by the real estate tax collector. Copies of the official change orders have been attached uh, been attached to the request. Uh, year 2019, uh, lot block 255-F-186 uh, for $54.14. These, these are all for the same person. Uh, lot block 255-F-186. 203, $172.87. Block block 255-F-205 uh, for $140.38 for a total of $367.39 to Fred and Margaret Valentino. And then 2019 block block uh, 321-E-103 for $254.80 and 331 a 48 for $279 in a penny, for a total of $533.81 to Aaliyah Properties, LLC. And then 2019, uh, lot block 322-B-89 for $226.77. And then 2018, for lot block 322-B-89 uh, for $226.77 for a total of uh, $453.54 for AX Properties, LLC. And then 2019, block block 255-P-209 for 5.59 and 29 cents. Block block, uh, 2018, block block 255-P-209 for $559 and 29 cents. And 2019, block block uh, 255-R-12 for $902.63. This is 2018. Block block 255-R-12 for $900. $2.63 for a total of $2,923.84 for seven fourteen Ventures Incorporated. So moved. Bruce, <laughs> <laughs> can you all in favor? I mean, that's a tag. We have a tag on my tag on my tag.
Uh, motion to accept and pay any commissions due 2019 real estate tax collector report. I'll move. Uh, Joe? Second. And uh, Bruce, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion to accept the August 2019 treasurer's report. I'll move. Uh, Joe? No, second. And Virginia, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the 2019 police report. So moved. Second. Uh, Bill and Joe Clasmo, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those <coughs> opposed? Motion carries. And motion to accept the September 2019 zoning report. So moved. Uh, Second. And Nino, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Comment, uh, Mike? Oh, yes, sir. It was uh, a nice report this month. A lot of activity. It was nice to see oh. yeah, some things getting addressed. Yeah. Appreciate that, Sean. Uh, can we go a little bit past again? Uh, committee reports. Bruce. I don't have any, sir. All right. Uh, finance, Joe? Um, finance was just a, pretty much a, a normal uh, type uh, expense expenditures uh, this month. Uh, however, the 2019 MMO uh, checks for the municipal and police retirement funds were cut uh, this past month. So those were two big checks that we know that were coming to be uh, cut that uh, needed to be cut. Um, other than that, we are uh, going to uh, try to schedule a meeting in the very near future for the Finance Committee uh, to start talking about 2020 budget, so that will be scheduled in the very near future. Uh, Parks and Recreation. Joe. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we had the uh, pre-construction meeting for the uh, restoration of the restrooms on the Welcome Park. We're waiting on permits from Allegheny County and the contractor wants to be going as quickly as possible on the uh, work down there. Uh, the parks are open right now, but coming towards the end of the month, the weather's going to start getting cold and we're going to shut the water off. Generally, they keep the parks open as long as it's not snow or anything, but the restrooms will be shut down. And it's a bit, summer's coming to an end. And uh, the uh, deadline for the newsletter has been extended to Thursday where a couple people hadn't submitted stuff yet, so they've extended it till Thursday. So any of the uh, organizations or whatnot have anything for the newsletter, just send them in through normal channels. And that's all I have. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Public Works. Well, you, so, you have my report. Uh, also, I want to add that uh, the uh, Public Works leading by Bill Bott. It did a heck of a good job to remove all the debris for the, the wood and center center, which I bid was close to $25,000. We made a public court with their help and their professional way to do it. We spent $11,000. It was a good, good saving over there. And the parks are beautiful. And uh, I told Public Court that I don't want to see the grass any higher than four inch for the last month or so. And uh, and what about next door? Yes. You guys like this? You guys like this? Yep, yeah, it's four inches. I'm on that mission. It's okay. <laughs> And I want to thank Nino. You, know, um, you did. A, I know you worked a lot with Public Works last month, making sure um, they were on it, uh, calling us all the time. So thank you very much for making sure. I that did not, Mr. Chairman, as well as you know, I did not abuse my power as a woman. I called the board manager. I called you and Joe. Well, I mean, yeah. After the last meeting, there was obviously you know a lot yes. of <laughs> intermediation <laughs> getting taken care of. And, I got some permission yep. from the big boys, and, mm -hmm. and I got it that good. Thanks. Um, public safety bill. Uh, the only thing I'll add, Mike, is <coughs> I'm working with a solicitor to uh, update the, um, the parking ordinances in town to help us address in the future this issue we have on the south end. So we're, we're working on it and gaining on it. So. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Madam Mayor. In the absence of Mary Wise, Historical Society President, I urge you to attend our bake sale on October 17th and 18th, on Thursday, 11 to 3, Friday, 10 to 3. Karen Falcone here this evening is always our 
big person, our chairperson, and she does a tremendous job in getting wonderful baked goods, so please support that. On October 29th, 7.30, the Demon of Brownsville Road will be presented by Bob Cranmer at the Bridgeville Volunteer Fire Department at 7.30. Mary won't be at that program because she does not like <laughs> those eerie type programs, but everybody else is welcome to attend. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, police Chief is not here. Uh, Tom? Thank you. You have my written report. Uh, as Mr. Henderson indicated, we're working on parking lines. And any, uh, I did attach to your report just kind of a cursory draft on one, one aspect of what we're thinking about. If we want to uh, make it flexible, that was by no means kind of a final product. And uh, no actually has some other thoughts on what's going to be so I just wanted to show you that, to show you your one aspect of how we can kind of simplify it, and he has a lot of cool things to add to Excellent. Thanks. Uh, Borough Engineer, do you have anything? Thank you, Mr. President. I provided everyone a copy of our engineer's report. Um, just a brief summary of some of the items. Regarding the 2019 Road Improvement Program, we had our pre-construction meeting with the contractor on October 2nd. We should have a schedule from him by the end of this week to provide to the borough. I'm going to proceed. Um, regarding the MS4 um, permit, we, we submitted our annual, the annual progress report on September 30th to DEP. Um, public Works projects, uh, the Janeway um, access went. Um, after reviewing it, reviewing it with the borough staff, um, we came up with some, some, some alternatives that everyone appeared to like, so we submitted that into the uh, conservation district. They liked it as well. They um, added it to the permit, so that is ready to go to construction as soon as we find some funding for it. Um, commercial street wall project. Um, in reviewing that, um, this is this is would be classified a levy, and um, the first step to that would be having scheduling a meeting with DEP. So we're going to schedule that meeting and then move forward. Um, the hydraulic analysis is going to be very critical to that because as we raise the wall, the water can go somewhere so we can not flood anybody else. Um, the Maple Street wall permit has been approved, so that project is, is a go to um, replace its section of Gabion and adjust that alignment. Um, the also, the uh, I've had an uh, opportunity to dig into the Army Corps' uh, hydraulic model of all the log off the run. I have it actually fully functioning, and I've been modifying it to see what these improvements are going to do. Hopefully by next month we should have a, at least a start of seeing everything we do is it going to raise water and lower water everywhere. So we gotcha. make sure everybody's uh, covered. And then, Can I interrupt with the Maple Street? Yeah. Is that funding in one of your different mitigation yes. numbers? Yes. Which one is it from? Oh, sorry, it's on the second page. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just trying to remember myself. Um, commercial street culvert cleaning and repair. Um, this includes repairing the concrete between the culverts because it's falling out. The um, permit was resubmitted to, uh, to, to the DEP for the, for the couple of minor comments they had. We should have that permit within the next month. So that project will also be ready to go out to, to bid. Everything else we've discussed so far. So. Um, I will add, uh, I know you guys submitted the grants for the uh, DEVF grant, um, and there was well, three of them, and there were three of them. Oh, yeah. yes. And you know, they're pretty significant. We're, out, we're, we're requesting a pretty significant amount of money. Um, I've talked to both uh, Senator Pam Iovino and State Representative Jason Martitai. And each one of them has like a little bucket of money, and they send letters of support for these grants, basically asking us, "Hey, which one are you really going after?" And they're both going after the same grant that we that we are looking at. So, hey, I can put so much money towards it, and hey, Pam has so so much money; she can put so much. So they're working together from Bridgeville trying to get us 
you know, this grant taken care of. So uh, it's nice to have them in that they're doing some nice work for us. So hopefully it will pay off. All right, uh, Fire Chief Ray. Thank you, Council President. Uh, last month, the fire department responded to 52 emergency calls. Um, our call volume on the year so far is uh, 388 calls as of today. Uh, it does look like this is going to be the busiest year for the Bridgeville Fire Department if numbers stay consistent. The monthly numbers stay consistent. We're going to be over 500 calls this year. Um, also, want to take a moment to thank the Lions Club, who uh, graciously donated smoke detectors uh, for our smoke detector campaign. Um, what we do when we go out on a call, we do a home inspection, um, you know, just make sure that there's smoke detectors and CO detectors in place. If the folks cannot afford those on their own, we will then replace them with the allotment that we got from the Lions Club. So we sincerely appreciate that. Uh, open house uh, that we did was, was a huge success. It was our first one. We, uh, not an exact number, but we definitely had uh, over 100 folks there, uh, including the mayor. So we appreciate everyone coming out and supporting that. Um, comedy show that was scheduled for this weekend for the Ross family um, is being postponed to no November 30th. Um, they just don't have enough tickets sold at this point. They wanted some more time to do so. So uh, that date was moved to November 30th. So anyone who had bought a ticket Obviously, that ticket will be honored um, for, the, for the show on November 30th. That is all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, South for GMS, Dan. Wait. Yeah. 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 We completed the uh, September campaign letter library. I don't have the numbers in officially from that. That was at the time of September. The 29th is the same day the firemen had their uh, open house. We had a lawn party there. We had about 40 kids in attendance. It was a nice weekend. So, uh, so the kids' organization did well. We all attended, and the mayor was our, uh, our event as well. And the other event coming up, the, the Friends of the Library is going to be hosting their uh, Halloween party Friday the 25th from 6 to 8. And that's the way I'll occur in the capital library this time. Okay. The 25th, Friday the 25th, 6 to 8. That's the Friends of the Library having their Halloween party. Perfect. Okay, thank All you. Thanks. Uh, there's nobody here from Parking Authority, uh, Planning Commission. Discuss the date of whatever we approve. Um, anything for the board? Preston, I was just working, I've been working a lot with uh, Lori. Uh, she's been coming in off and on um, on a number of items. I handled most of the day to day for her. Um, and I know she's been keeping you all surprised with everything. Sounds good. Uh, old business. I just want to thank the community for helping the Bridgeville South Bay Library. Uh, uh, the two firemen individuals over there and uh, second responders. Yeah, the second oh. responders. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. And, and uh, Chief, Chief King had that quote. Uh, they have all three helped us in the judging of the, the chilies. Uh, there are a few protests, but um, but it was a great event. There was over, I've, I've just heard this, there's over 800 people there. Uh, the money that the Rotary uh, uh, uses, uh, helps the community in all kinds of variety of different things. The EMS actually got a grant uh, from us this past year as well as the food bank. So um, the money is put to good use for good, good reasons for the community. So thank you for the participation with that. Any new business or anything? Mr. Chair, has anybody talked to uh, Pandot about Bank Street? I mentioned that last meeting to Kevin. Uh, I haven't heard anything. Somebody talked to that in me either. Maybe uh, maybe our assistant manager should give a call. <coughs> on, on, on I think it's pretty bad. It's a mess. Maybe, yes. Yeah. It's so very bad. Pen, it's a yeah. state road. Right. It is penned up. The engineering was going to look at that? What? Yeah. And I thought Kevin was going to look at that? It was. I mean, it is absolutely. You can check and see if you did. It was done a long, long time ago. Half a year. Yeah. Over 50 years. I saw it done once. 
No, we did it about 25 years ago. Yeah, well, I'm we did the parking. <laughs> 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 but anyway, <laughs> it's, it's needed to okay. contact the so office okay. when it's come, at least maybe they can put on their budget for the springtime. Winter is coming. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, with the chief being absent, I'll uh, remind you that Halloween will be celebrated Thursday the 31st, <coughs> typically from 6 to 8, I believe that's what it is. So they will be out and about, uh, you know, typically spread their their cheer or whatever it is that they, they hand out. But uh, they'll be out watching traffic too. Please be careful, be safe out there. You guys will be going around too, right? Absolutely. Yes. That's what I thought. All right. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion. Anybody second that? Awesome. When is when is Halloween? Uh, <laughs> <laughs>